This video looks at one of the new samples in Parism Studio. Here you can open an upstream model and you get directly into the user interface like this. This model, it has a simple interface where you have the home screen, you have some input views, you can see the input as graphs, financial factors and the input table. If looking at this table, you can recognize these values in the corresponding Excel file where the data are coming from. Here you see the Excel file, it's oil and gas inputs for instance. It consists of four diagrams in this case. It's a list of fields, some economical data, they are common for all fields, and there's one sheet for each field listed in fields. In this case, you have Troll and Heimdall. Troll has these data, which are specific. Heimdall has the same kind of data but different values. Looking at the value 25.98, that's the value you find in the user interface in the model 25.98. In some cases, you may want to do temporarily changes in these inputs. You can easily do so here. For instance, changing it to 25. Now you see this is not changed in the Excel file. It's of course still 25.98 here, but in the model, you can view the results dependent on these changes. The changes will remain until you reset the model. When resetting, it goes back to the values you read from Excel. You can also change this in graphs. You see here is a value 25. If I reduce that to approximately 10, then I can go back here and you see it's almost 10. In the graph, it's much easier to change all the values in one operation, like this for instance. For this case, I'll reset them so we keep the values from Excel. For results, in this model, there is a screen for looking at the effect of the discount rate. If discount rate is zero, the discounted cash flow is of course the same as the cash flow itself. If we start increasing discount rate, we discount the values more on the upcoming years than the later years. We can also accumulate this. If the discount rate is close to the interest rate of return, then the accumulated discounted cash flow will end up at zero. Here you see it's a bit above zero, meaning this project is a good project, but if the discount rate is too high, it may go negative. Now you see it's negative. The interest rate of return is now 12.24. If I set the discount rate to that exact value, then you see the net present value, which is the ending part of this accumulated discounted cash flow, it's exactly zero, as you see here. You can also look at the cutoff time. As you see, if we have operational costs that are too high, then we'll need to cut off the project sooner and lower operational costs will cause the project to be able to stay longer. This calculation is possible thanks to the series variables in the model, actually making the model run twice. First, it calculates the cutoff, then it can calculate other values in the model. For tech scenarios, you may want to compare the current value with other values in the model. Here, you can say you want to store the current case, meaning the case where the current cutoff changes I made. Then I can look at a lower tax rate scenario and compare these two values to see what's the difference in different situations. So the normal would be to run a current tax case, reset, so I read the current values from Excel, then store the scenario, and look at the lower tax and the higher tax. There are many functions used to import data from Excel into this file. As you see, we have two fields being read from Excel in this case. What if I have another Excel file? In this model, we have utilized so-called placeholders. So here you see the inputs to the model being read from this oil and gas inputs. If I choose to read another file, alternative inputs like this, and reset the model, then you see I've got three different fields and different data. We can read the inputs. Everything is now based on these three fields. But the real interesting part about this model, that is how it's built. That's covered in the video going inside the upstream model. It will explain that there isn't one single variable on the root level of this model. It will also go inside some of the submodels. Thank you for watching.